So we've created our first hypertext, uh, hypertext website with, with connections between three different pages. And you've seen how you can create a basic nav bar, but what, what we're going to do now is, is learn about a few more useful HTML tags that, that you're going to see on every single page, more or less. So the first one we're going to find out about is the IMG tag, which allows us to embed images in our site. So let's, let's go into the code. So what, what I'd like to do is on my About Me page, uh, I would like to have um, some sort of image to, to maybe show a picture of, of what I look like. So let's see if I can find that. So I'm, I'm editing aboutme.html and in my folder here, uh, I've actually got um, a file called myk.png where I look a bit uh, strange, but that's, that's okay, it's, in the, it's the internet. And I'm going to just look at that. So that's myk.png. Okay, so if PNG is the, is the file extension. That means it's an image file, unlike the HTML files. And so normally, if, if you're working in a word processor, you just get that, that image file and drop it in, right? You drag and drop it, but we can't do that in HTML. What we have to do is uh, make our pages out of lots of different pieces. Uh, so yeah, we have the HTML file, and if we want to have an image file in that page, we actually have to use a tag and pull the image in with a tag. And as I said earlier, it's the IMG tag. So let's let's do that. IMG. Okay. And normally, an image tag it doesn't actually have any text inside it. You don't you don't put any text inside an image tag. So we can use a shorthand. We don't have to have this close tag here. We can just put that in that, like that at the end of the tag and that, that sort of opens and closes it in one go. And you notice I've put an SRC attribute in here and this is how I tell the browser where to load the image from. So it's called myk.png. And, and a top tip here is that don't put uh, spaces in your, in your file names. So if, if you really want to se put several words in a file name, put underscores in. So, so let's say it was called myk picture. Um, you wouldn't write, uh, you wouldn't do it like that. You'd have to have, you'd always put underscores in instead. But that, that's okay, I don't need that for now. I'm just going to call it MYK. And let's save that and go back to the browser and, and go to the About Me page. And you can see that now, uh, oh dear, I've got a sort of giant image, which isn't really what I was after. Uh, so what, what I can do is I can put another attribute in uh, to, to set the, the, the size of the image. So let's say we want a width of uh, say um, uh, 50 percent like that you can see now the browser has cleverly set the width of the image to precisely sort of 50 percent or half of the width of the whole page and so as, as I kind of make the page wider you can see that it's actually automatically changing the size of the image to reflect that 50 percent Okay, so I've embedded an image, great, and it's automatically resizing it for me, which is what you might call responsive. So that's our very first step into responsive web design, the idea that depending on the size of the image, uh, the page that you're looking at, depending on the size of the window, it can sort of the page adapts to that size. Uh, we could also hard code it. We could say, no, I want it to be 150 pixels, and that's it. And then you'll see, uh, you know, it stays the same size uh, regardless of how wide the window is. But I, I quite like the responsive feel of it, so I, I'm going to stick it to 50%. Okay, and then maybe below the image, I'd, I'd put some sort of caption uh, as, a, as a sort of third level heading. Um, this is me looking the other way, right? So we just put a little caption under there. You can see underneath, there's a little, little caption. Um, well, we can actually uh, do something clever here. We can actually turn an image into a link. Uh, so what I could do is, is uh, uh, put an A tag around the image. So if I just format it out nicely so that it's really obvious what's going on. Okay, so there's, the, there's my image tag. And then I do end of A there. I've now turned the image into a link. Of course, I need to tell it where to go. Well, um, Maybe it could just go straight to the image file itself. So now, now, now that, that link's just going to go straight to mykpng. So let's see what that does. Uh, okay, and 
Zooming in again, let's just check that mouse pointer. So it's, that's the normal mouse pointer. When I go over here, you can see it turns into a sort of clickable thing, mouse pointer. And you, you'll see at the bottom of that browser window as well that it's actually popping up some information about where that uh, link is going to go. So let's click on it. And you can see now it's just, just showing the, the, the image file. It's not showing the HTML anymore. So I can use my browser back button to get back out. OK. So I've, I've used the IMG tag. Now, another tag I wanted to show you about is, is the tags that we can use for, for listing. So quite often on web pages, we want to create lists of things. Uh, so I don't know if it's the most popular type of web page on the net, but you certainly will have come across the best five um, Coursera web programming MOOCs, uh, for example, or maybe the best five uh, pictures of funny animals or whatever it is uh, that people look at on the internet. Uh, so how do we create these kind of lists of things? Well, um, I'm going to go to the contact page and I'm going to put, use, that seems like a sensible place where we might have a list of things. Uh, and so there's different ways of creating lists. You've got ordered list, OL. So let's see how that looks. And again, we use that concept of one tag being inside another tag. Okay, so we can do that. And uh, so um, my 133 my street. Here is my address. Uh, save that and then we go to the contact page so you can see it's, it's put a one and if I, if I put another thing there um, my town and I can add another one my nation So you can see that there we've, we've created sort of a list that, and the browser again has automatically done some stuff for me. So it's obviously automatically selected the font, but it's also indented this list slightly. So it's pushed it to the in, in a bit and it's automatically created a one, two, three. The other, another type of list is the, the unformatted list. And let's just see how that looks. Uh, and so it's an unordered list and UL gives you bullet points as you can see there instead of uh, having numbers I've now got bullet points and you can see that the browser again has indented it and it's created this special circular icon to indicate a bullet point and I, and I didn't have to do any of that that's all the browser interpreting it for me uh, there's one more called the descriptive list description list uh, which you can uh, go and look at yourself and find out about in fact we're going to see it in, in a later lesson so that's it so we, we've just seen how to use some other types of tags. We've used the image tag and we've used two types of list tags and you've seen that we can put one tag inside another tag.